I recently did a video on this uh, article. It's um, the effects of uh, short-term carbohydrate uh, overfeeding and long-term weight loss on uh, the liver, liver fat in overweight humans. Um, <clears throat> this was in the American Journal of uh, Clinical Nutrition back in 2012, and um, it was one of the first uh, prospective sh studies to show, it may be the first prospective study to show uh, fatty liver due to increase in carbohydrates in the diet. Now there was a, there was also a, a, another article, an editorial on this article, so that's when you know that an article's important because they have other editorial articles about that article in the same, same edition of the journal. This one was titled, Why Do Sweets uh, Fatten Our Livers? And <clears throat> there were several components. I mentioned that in the other article, but I wanted to go in a little bit more detail on this. First of all, um, again, um, according to this article, we had some inkling beforehand that carbohydrates in the diet, CHO, carbohydrates, uh, create de novo uh, lipogenesis. And again, if you don't know what that is, de novo means new, from nothing, and uh, lipo means fat, and genesis means uh, creation or beginning. So um, carbohydrates in the diet create, uh, cause the body to create fat from the carbohydrates. Uh, the first time, as we mentioned a couple of times, this was the first time to show that uh, carbohydrates in the diet caused NAFLD, NAFLD. Uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. They did MRIs and measured and saw a 27% increase in the livers of these obese individuals after eating three weeks of 1,000 kilocalories of simple carbohydrates. They put them on a low-carbohydrate diet and decreased uh, calories for six months afterwards, and that fatty liver went away. Now, <clears throat> it also... Uh, one of the unique and powerful things about this study was that it did both of these at the same time. It measured fatty liver. It also measured uh, de novo lipogenesis and showed that both of them were occurring. And in response, they went up when you had a lot of carbohydrates in your diet and they went back down when you cut them out. So very, very strong evidence. Uh, some other things that the study showed, uh, decrease HDL. Um, and again, that goes back to the important equation of triglycerides, uh, Tg over HDL. Why does that go back to triglycerides over HDL? This de novo lipogenesis. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Ba well, basically, the de novo lipogenesis was seen from um, increased palmitate. Palmitate is a... it's palm oil. <clears throat> It's, uh, you see it in the environment, you see it in sodium palmitate or palmitoil. Look at those two words on the ingredients of your, um, of processed foods. You'll see them over and over again. They're a food softener and palm oil, palmitate, palm, the palm, uh, palmitic free fatty, free fatty acid is made by the humans as well. It's very common, uh, made by plants and animals as a common free fatty acid. It's also been shown to damage um, the islets of Langerhans, the, uh, ins the parts of the pancreas that generate insulin. So again, we're starting to get some of that, um, some linkages about some other things that are very connecting some dots that are very important. So, <clears throat> um, Increased triglycerides, as shown by increased palmitate, um, and decreased HDL. Again, a uh, de novo lipogenesis associated with carbohydrate ingestion. Um, oh, increased uh, AST and uh, increased ALT. Uh, those are the transaminases. Uh, don't need to worry about that term, but those are liver enzymes. You see those increased, those liver enzymes increased with fatty liver disease. Um, with alcoholic fatty liver disease, you get ALT increased a little bit higher than AST. With non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD, you get AST increased a little bit more, which is the pattern that they saw in this, in this uh, research. 
Um, <clears throat> oh, here's a very interesting component. There's a genetic, um, a genetic marker. It's PNPLA3, uh, and it's the 148mm variant. Don't have to worry about any of those numbers. But it's a type of genetic marker that has been shown to have increased um, progression from NAFLD to NASH. In other words, fatty liver disease into the inflammation. They, sh they measured that on these individuals. And what they found was they had these individuals, whether they had uh, 148mm or not, they still had the same increase in de novo lipogenesis. Now, the authors suggested that maybe the increase in NASH in these 148mm genetic uh, individuals is due to, um, it isn't that they, they uh, make fatty liver quicker, it's just that they can't break it down and they get more of, a, of an inflammation. Well, <clears throat> the author of the editorial, uh, Lisa Hudgens rightly pointed out, look, you've got 16 individuals. That's not really enough, especially once you start to break them down to see who's got which genetic markers. It's not enough to uh, show what's going on genetically and what that specific 148.8mm uh, is doing. Again, <clears throat> if, if some of the genetics, some of the terminology um, gets a little confusing, bottom line is this. Um, this study does demonstrate that feeding uh, obese people, they had already done this with thin people and didn't see it, carbohydrates causing fatty liver. But in obese people, uh, BMI 30 or higher, feeding them carbohydrates can ca will cause fatty liver. Um, it also causes um, fat. It's not fat in the diet. It's fat that the, the human body is generating. Um, Decreasing those carbs, decreasing uh, calorie content, uh, both contribute, appear to contribute to decreasing that fatty liver. So thank you again for your attention.